Hello, hello, and good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining today's episode of Career Conversations. I am super thrilled about today's guest. My guest is Linda Smolkin. She is a content strategist, excuse me, content manager at SMPS, which is the Society for Marketing and Professional Services. But she's also an author and novelist, and I've been checking out her book, Among the Branded. So today we're going to talk about her career journey to becoming an author, and we're going to learn a little bit more about some of her best writing tips because she is open to questions today. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Linda Smolkin into the conversation. Welcome, Linda. So glad to have you. Hey, good morning or actually good afternoon. How are you? Yeah, it is. I mean, afternoon. <laughs> yeah, where are we? Right. Oh, well, in some places it's, it's still morning. We'll go with it. <laughs> Thank you for having me on your show. I, I love your show. I try to catch as many episodes or sh uh, that I can. They're, they're awesome. Yeah, and I'm so glad to like finally have you on the other side of things. You always ask like really good questions and offer good comments and feedback. So it is a pleasure to have you. And so I want to jump right in like we always do. You kind of watch the show um, with my first question, which is what does your family think you do when you tell them that you're an author and novelist? Um, well, first, let me let me just say that they it's nothing special you know uh it's just any other day in the smoking household as long as there's food in the fridge it's all good you know um but um they're i think they're just they they know what i do and uh they're just they seem to be proud of me well that's good your family's proud of you and they and they're happy there there's food <laughs> yes right so, so what do you actually do like what in your in your own words how would you describe it well during the day, I have a full-time job. I'm a writer for a nonprofit organization, and um, that keeps me super busy. And around that, in the mornings or after work or on weekends, that's when I write my books. Ah, so you've carved out like a special time, like in a routine. Do you have like a, a set, like an alarm set when you get up in the morning, or how do you kind of juggle that process to set up your? Yeah, well, yeah, the alarm. Yeah, sometimes I do hit the snooze, but. Uh, I try, try not to do that too often. It depends um, uh, where I am in the process of writing a book. And I found the older I get, the more tired I am at the end of the day. So what I did for the third book is I started writing some of it before work so that I wasn't as tired at the end of the day and because I was kind of putting it off a little bit because I finished the work day and then I'd go to sit down and write my novel and I just, I was tired. So uh, what I did is I kind of changed my routine and in the morning I started setting my alarm about 15 minutes early and I did not go on social media because before I would get up it's been maybe half an hour checking my email, going on social media, because that is part of being a novelist. You have to kind of little put yourself out there and get on social media and, and all that fun stuff. But I found that I wasn't writing. So I switched it up to write the third book and I got up a little earlier and then I just started writing. I kind of kept my, um, laptop by the bed or near the bed and I would just grab it and I would just write for about a half an hour and I got a lot done and um, what normally would take me a lot lo longer to write a draft I wrote a draft in about five months that way which is crazy wow. cra for me crazy fast now it was it, very fast it, it sucked but it was a draft and then I went back and I spent a lot more time fixing it but that's how um, and I would encourage um, that would be one piece of advice if you can't seem to find time to write or you're tired after your job, if you are you have a full-time job, like all of us or most of us. Most of us, yeah. You know, it's, it's not as often as a you find a full-time novelist, um, but there are some. But if you have another job, whether it's a writing job or any kind of profession and you want to write or write a book, you can, that's, that's what I would recommend. Um, but it depends also on your uh, lifestyle and, and um, how you can get things done. If you can't do that, you know, maybe find time 15 minutes here and there where it's quiet and you don't have any distractions and you can do it that way. And so do you like to write like using pen or do you like to type or a pencil? What is your preference and approach to this? So 
uh, for writing, uh, let me let me just say first before I actually start writing, I work on what I call an outline, and that takes probably two to three months. I've gotten a little faster, but mostly two to three months, and that I handwrite. And those are basically scenes of what's going to happen in a book. And those scenes turn into chapters. So I work on that for a few months and that's handwritten. And then when it comes to writing the draft, I use the computer and then I normally, it, it may be the second draft, it may be after that where I print it out and then I read through it. And then I, where I see I want to add a scene or need to add more, I'll, I'll handwrite it. So it's, it's a combination of, of, of those. Oh, that's cool. So as far as like me, I would imagine if I'm writing something that took me months to put together, I'd be terrified of losing it. Like, do you back it up somewhere or, or what do you do? <laughs> that is actually a fear that, you know, I'm always thinking, oh my God, if I lose that, I'll do, what am I going to do? A variety of things, you know, the old school, thumb drive, whatever that thing is called. The thumb, is it a what, the what? thumb drives? Yeah. yeah there you go. Drive. That thing. Um, and then I also sometimes email it to myself. And then I'll always have the printed copy. Uh, and then obviously on my laptop. Yeah, you know, because yeah, that would be, that would be a nightmare. That would that would be horrible, yes. No, no, that's a really cool approach. So we've talked a little bit about what your family thinks you do, and they're like super proud of you, which is awesome to have that kind of support. We've talked a little bit about your process and and how you start from from handwriting like a outline, and that takes a few months, and then you shift into to kind of typing things up, and then you move into to marking it up like physically. I'm still like a fan of like hand marking up stuff too, so I get it. Yeah, like, yeah. It's just like this connection with like physical stuff. Sometimes it just yeah. you can't get it get it quite right any other way, at least in my mind. And maybe that makes me kind no, of like no, I old. think you're right. You know, you know, the, it depends on where you are in the process. And also I do like it because sometimes I think differently when I'm writing. And also you can, well, you can take a laptop anywhere, but you can also take like, um, I find changing up the scenery or the setting helps me come up with ideas or help with the writing when I'm stuck. So um, I, I sometimes do that. I'll leave my house, go sit on a park bench or go, um, you know, about 10 minutes from where I live. It's really beautiful. I'll sit there and just watch people walk by and just, you know, that's how that kind of inspires me to get stuff down on paper or on the laptop. Okay, so then you said when you get stuck, how do you get unstuck? Like, is it because of the people around you kind of inspiring you? What, what gets you out of the stuck place? Eavesdropping on conversation. <laughs> no, no. So you, yeah, I, I shouldn't probably say that, but you can, get, you know, eavesdropping on conversations. People don't realize it. No. What gets me unstuck? Um, the only time I'm, if I work with an outline, I'm really stuck because I've already got. How do you get unstuck? Like, is it because of the people around you kind of inspiring you? Oh, one second. Of the stuck place. Okay. Yeah, got it. Though. <laughs> it's like we okay. get oh. Anyway, um, to get unstuck, well, if I have an outline, um, then I can easily fill it in. Where where I get stuck is so after I feel like it's at a certain stage of the process, uh, I'll send it to an editor, and the editor will review it, and then I get back what's called a development letter. She does what's called a line editing where she goes through the manuscript and she she puts her comments in the document. But then I also get a letter of all the things I need to fix. And the last one was about 16 pages. And you really have to be sitting down to read that because there's a lot to be fixed. And that's when I spend two weeks and I have no, I, I don't even touch the manuscript because I have no idea how to fix everything or anything that needs to be fixed. And so I just kind of let it sink in to, and to get unstuck, I think I just, I do a lot of walking um, and that helps to, you know, I listen to music or change up the scenery. I think that is the key. Um, going back to what I was saying before, to change up the scenery and um, not like stare at the walls all day long really helps to come up with ideas or get unstuck. And I've said that um, in one of my Ask an Author videos that I did on LinkedIn, that to get 
unstuck or to get out of a writer's block is to actually not write, to get up, change your scenery, take a walk, stretch, go listen to music, do, do something that's not writing and then come back to it. And if you don't have the luxury to take a break, let's say it's your job and you're under a deadline or something, just somehow, and you can't change the topic, you have a set topic you need to write about, just jot down some bullets or thoughts um, and that should help the writer's block. And then you can finesse it and actually make it into something that is readable. Yeah, like actual like sentences versus this idea of like, should probably make this person a little bit more mysterious. Like that doesn't mean anything, but, but when you get ready to circle back. Yes, yes. So, I, you know, for the, as far as the book stuff, um, yes, a lot of times you need to um, add stuff about a character, make them more interesting or add conflict to a scene to make it more interesting, especially if, if you're writing fiction, it's, it's got to be better than, or there are things in life that happen that are exciting, but fiction, you, you have, you know, without making it too far-fetched, you, you have that opportunity to make the story more interesting than if it were something that happened in real life, because that's what people want. They, they want to escape when they're reading fiction. And so you have that opportunity to do so. So yes, um, there are times when you, you do have to add conflict or you have to describe a scene better and that can be really difficult. So getting in the car and driving and, and looking at different neighborhoods could, could possibly help you describe a scene better or watching. Actually, the whole eavesdropping is actually good also because you can watch people the way they're gesturing, the body talk. Because when you're writing a scene with dialogue, you need to uh, include or make someone feel like they're part of the scene. And you do that through language, not just what they're talking about, but what's happening in the room or what her face looks like or how she's standing, if she's holding her arms or, or, or folding her arms, you know, that, that sort of thing. So actually getting out into the world will help with the creative process. Awesome. So we, we talked a little bit about like some of the best writing tips, how to get unstuck, which was super helpful. You said, look, get out of the house. Actually, don't write, <laughs> which, which, seems, which seems like a counterintuitive piece of advice. But if you can, like you said, that that's an approach to consider. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about you. What did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, well, uh, mostly a writer. So when I was about 10 years old, yeah, I'm one of those people who kind of knew all along what they wanted to do or when they grew up. There was a very brief moment, very brief, when I wanted to be an architect, it was like 30 seconds, but then I realized how much math was involved and I was like, I don't think I'm gonna go into architecture, but mostly writing. I was about 10 or 11 years old when I remember, I don't remember what the commercial was, but when I saw a commercial and I'm like, oh, that's cool. Those jingles and those slogans or whatever they um, I'm like, I don't know what you call it, but I want to be a writer. So I found out that that's actually called copywriting. And I went to school, I went to University of Maryland, got my degree in journalism with a concentration in advertising and a minor in English. And then my first job out of college was cop copywriting and for a department store. And I've been doing pretty much that ever since. Uh, you know, I often say that if my parents had bought me a drum set, I'd possibly be a drummer right now like, as a profession because it's truly a passion of mine, but I don't know. So I'm, I guess I shouldn't do the whole what ifs, you know? Well, also it's not over. That's true. That's you might true. wake up and next year you're on stage. <laughs> Drumming it out on, on a weekend. I, mean, I love it. Drumming it out. I yeah, that sounds good to me. Yeah. So, yeah. You never know. I, I that's what I kind of love about these conversations. Always kind of the layers and the possibilities we get to kind of explore here. So you said that for a split second you wanted to be an architect, but then you realized that was too much math. <laughs> that that's pretty funny. Um for people who are interested in becoming like copywriters or, or authors and novelists, like what do you, what advice do you have for them or what things do they maybe focus on to develop those kinds of skills? Okay. Uh, 
I'll, I'll talk about copywriting first and then I'll talk about the whole, you know, writing a book. So to, to be a copywriter, I think it depends on, um, like if you want it, if you want to do it full time and you have another job, that you, let's say you can't quit your job, right? Yeah. You can start doing it on the side. You can ask maybe at, at your work if you could do some writing projects because really what you need is to develop your skills as a writer and to get a job as a writer, you need to have a portfolio or samples to show. And so to have that, you need to have your work, you know, so that's what I would recommend. If, um, if you're, you know, studying in college or, you know, you don't have another job and you want to jump right in, you can also maybe start freelancing and try to get some projects. But the best thing to do is, just gain some experience and if you can't do it full time try, try to get some projects or try to ask at work if you can work on some writing projects and then if you can maybe get a mentor to to help you or to give you advice on um you know your writing to help you improve on it uh you should do that too because um that will really help hone your skills and, and improve them. And, but the most important thing is to get the experience and get uh, your po portfolio together. Because if you do go for a job, they will ask for writing samples. So yeah. that, that's the most important thing. Um, and the to also be open to feedback because that's the way with anything, any kind of profession, you, you should be open to feedback, but especially for writing because that's how you grow. And um, for for writing a book, I would say um, just I recommend an outline, you know, to start with an outline. But a lot of writers don't. They just go right in and they write. So you have to kind of decide what you want to do. It helps me with the writing if I already have a, an outline or see where the story is going. Uh, you know, find a time when you can write and just start writing the also reading do a lot of reading to see depending if you want to write nonfiction or fiction pick up some books see how other writers are writing that will help as well um and um you know just start i think that's the best thing if it's something you really really want to do you should start and do it and because you don't want to look back. Well, there's like you said, it's never too late to start something. But if you want to, if you really want to do it, just start it and do it and see where it goes. Of course, you mentioned mentors. This seems like it resonated with Gia. She said mentors are essential. Can you tell me a little bit about a bit about maybe some of your mentors that you've had over the years? Oh, um, mostly in a professional setting but i also have some author friends who've helped me along the way in a professional setting um i was you know i started as a junior copywriter so i had you know copywriters um you know above me and then my copy supervisor you know um i think honestly the best mentors for me were the ones who were honest yes who um <laughs> It really made me get a thick skin because, and it made me realize that um, writing is a lot of rewriting. Nothing comes out beautiful at the beginning. And any book you read, any article you've read, any ad that you've read or movie you've watched for you know the screenplay, nothing is the first draft. It takes so much work to get it polished and. I think that is important for people who want to become a writer or who are writing, but get discouraged or frustrated um, that there are times when you, you know, need to rewrite all the time. And so if you remember that, then it's a little easier um, because um, you just have to put in the work, but it's, it's worth it, especially if that's something that's your passion, your dream to do. It's, it's definitely worth it. Um, so it was, so for mentors for me were people who came back to my desk and said, this really sucks. You need to rewrite it. So, you know, I wouldn't probably say that to somebody, but, um, it worked for me. The tough love worked for me. 
It worked for you. I think that's important for for mentors and mentees to kind of find the balance in the relationship about like what communication style works for some people. If you come to some people and say this really sucks, you've completely crushed their spirit and no longer interested in doing it. Other people are like, oh, oh, this sucks. You know what? Now I got a book. Like that's what you do, right? Yes, you're right. Yeah. Like this is like revenge. (laughs) My editor, she had 16 pages of things I had to fix. So, um, and she was very honest um, and and said, you you really need, you, you got your work cut out for you. I'm like, okay, let's do this. After two weeks of it, like actually sinking in and then trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, you know, you're right. You know, it depends on the person. Some people, I wouldn't, yeah. You know, saying to someone it sucks is really hard. Right, And recognizing it sucks, you know, you're, you know, for yourself to recognize that it sucks, that's, that's good that you can recognize it. But for someone else to tell you that's, that's hard. So no, it, it could be a lot softer of approach, but you do have to recognize or um, know that there is a lot of revision, um, but it's fun. It's a great field. I love what I do. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Someone asked a really great question. It said, would you recommend some books for aspiring writers? For, well, there are like, I I can't remember the name of it, but Stephen King wrote a book about writing. That's very good, but I can't remember the name of it. You can go on Amazon or your favorite indie bookstore and pick it up. Uh, It depends also on the type of writing. I think he talks about writing fiction. Um, I actually have by me a book that I recommend a lot called Elements of Stop. Everybody gets this book. I swear, if you like this everybody. book, it's like it's how many pages? Like it's eight a handful. Pages. It's not very long, but, but it's really good. It, it's great. They they've updated it. You can go on. Um, I think on Amazon, it, it, um, it's maybe ten bucks or something. You can mm-hmm. it's, you can have one for every room of your place. <laughs> Yeah, no, Scrumped and White is like classic. Like, I think I got this book, like, it might have been like AP literature in high school or, or one of my college classes. Oh, yeah. somebody bailed us out about this, the Stephen King book. They said, oh, oh it's called On Writing. On Writing, yes, yes. On and Writing. She, and Fernando said she's right. It's excellent. Yeah, get that. So book. I think, That's a great book. As far I, I cho- um, as far as his writing in general, the more you read, the better writer you'll be. For fiction, read fiction. You'll see um, how to start chapters and chapters. You'll you'll know that one chapter should be a scene. Um, you know, you'll learn all kinds of stuff. I I did, uh, and that's one of the things I liked about Among the Branded. Like it moves. Like there, like you, you get to like this point where you're like, oh, what's next? And then you get to the end of the chapter, you're like, now I got to keep going because oh. I, I got to know what's in this letter. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, you got to know what's in the letter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Like so that like it just it moves and and you know there's this moments of like, okay, well, is he gonna go meet this lady or not? Like so all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. But I'm not gonna tell anymore. You guys got to find out for yourself. But let me tell you, this book is good. I so, appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate so, it. Yeah. I mean, I, I've enjoyed it. I, like I said, I shared, I think yesterday I was like, look, there are moments I have gasped and go like, there are moments I have like laughed because it was like, maybe it's not appropriate to laugh, but it's kind of funny. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> like literally out loud, I've laughed. Like I, I can count like every few pages for like the first, probably like hundred. I was like, I'm supposed to be giggling, but this is good. <laughs> like, no, it's the good. dialogue is so real. It's like if you were watching like a mother and child interact, like some of the, the conversations, I was like, ooh, this sounds like my mama. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, she's not joking when she says I eavesdrop a little bit. Like, you have nailed it. I like it a lot. So thank you for, for doing the painstaking work of, of going through 16 pages of Edward's <laughs> comments. <laughs> to, to create this, I, I, I'm I'm glad it's here among the branded y'all. It's by mm-hmm. Linda Smolkin. Um, I wanted to know if you'd be still open to reading an excerpt for us from the book. Sure, you want to do it now? Yes, yes. Let's let's give people a taste of what they're missing. <laughs> All right. So, uh, by the way, here's my like shameless plug. It actually just came out on audiobook. So if you listen, if you are um, listening to audiobooks. You can pick it up on Amazon and you can get it a little cheaper if you pick up the ebook at the same time. Or if you would like the paperback, you can go to indiebound.org and um, support your favorite indie store. The ebook isn't available on there, but if you want a paperback, you can. You can just choose which indie bookstore you want to support and buy it there. 
Um, now, yeah. now, now, now we get to the, um, as Janika mentioned, it's a story about a woman. She's an art director and she picks up or she goes to a flea market where she buys what she thinks are love letters from the war written during World War II. Turns out one isn't a love letter after all. And when she gets it translated because it's written in German, she's determined to find out if the person mentioned in the letter is still alive. And so she goes on this little journey. And so I think um, that would be a good place for me to read from when she is starting to read the letter after she gets it back from her coworker, Svetlana, who translated the letter for her. So um, I'll start from there. I continue to read the rest of the letter. In every curve of the writing, fear and desperation soberly united with hope but toward the middle, desperation outweighed everything else. Even if the person had survived, she would most likely be gone now. But I still wondered about their fate, especially the fate of Isidore, who I assumed was their son. At the bottom, still hoping for sponsorship, she had put their birth dates. At the time, Isidore was just five years old, too young to take care of himself, too young to escape on his own, too young to worry, which was, in a way, fortunate. Svetlana, I said, holding the letter, this is a door she talks about. You'll think I'm crazy, but I need to find out if he's still alive. Daragaya, why would you want to torture yourself digging up the past of the Holocaust? It's so sad. I paused and looked up at the light, hoping again to push back the tears. Do you believe in fate? Of course I do then you'll understand why. I walked over to her cube, laid the letter on her desk and pointed to the last paragraph. Because that boy shares the same birthday as my father down to the year they were born, July 12, 1936. I have to find out what happened. Svetlana turned around and paused. This kid and your dad, what if they're the same person? You know how crazy that sounds, right? I leaned on her on her cubicle wall. No way it could have been my dad. He had a thick Southern accent, and his family had been in North Carolina since the early 1900s. Intriguing, yes, likely not a chance. But it wasn't just chance this letter found its way to me. It couldn't have been. Before picking up the comps from the printer, I put a reminder in my phone to find the envelope to start my search for Isidore. And that's it. That's the excerpt. Oh, I like this. This is where it takes off, you guys. Like, you got to find out what's next. Like, seriously, if you are on the fence, get off the fence. Get on <laughs> newbound.org, order it, read it, share it with friends. It, it's a really good book. Thank and you. I think it's a, a really good way to escape. I don't know about you guys, but it's been a long, like, year and a half. We need an escape. We deserve one. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, it has been a hard year. year. Search for Linda Smolkin. The name of the book is called Among the Branded. I got my copy, so I'm not telling you to do something I already haven't done. Support. <laughs> 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 of course. Like, I, I get so much joy from being able to support people and their visions and their projects. Like, I mean, who knows what's next? Next thing you know, you might be on Good Morning America next year. What are we going to do about it? <laughs> oh, so. You never know. You never know. Look, see, Antonio is making me cool. Oh. He's got a signed copy. Hi, Antonio. So, Thank so you. now I might be buying a second book if I can get you to sign it. I, I'm happy to sign it. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. People were responding to your to your ex service and what an interesting plot. Thank I agree. You. This is why I'm telling you, you need to go get it because it's it's really good. Um, Gia said that sounds like a good. It is. See, I'm, Linda, you got gold here, and I'm just trying to let everybody know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's really good. Someone said, I'm certainly intrigued. This this is this is what it's all about. Career conversations is a, it's an opportunity for us to share all of our gifts with each other because yes, we have nine to fives and jobs that pay the bills. We also got passions and skills that are, are the key and the opportunity for, for each other to, to live our best lives. <laughs> you know, speaking of which, um, I have to just say, no matter how old you are but especially for the younger people. <laughs> I, I want to give some words of advice, you know, like adults, well-intentioned adults will give you advice all the time, but they're really, you can't put a price on peaceful state of mind. I, and I heard this somewhere, so I can't, I can't take credit for it. You can't be brave without disappointing some people. 
So you have to do what you want to do and just say thank you for the advice and do what you want to do because, you know, you don't want to be later in life, you know, saying, I wish I'd done this. Or I wish I'd done that because I think you'll be successful, whatever that word means, no matter what you do, if you do what you want to do. So that's, that's all I want to say about that. That I, you have to follow what, whatever is, you know, making you, you know, like keeping you up at night thinking about stuff, you know? That is, you know, that's literally crazy. So Shipper said, we absolutely do. So you have to disappoint some people. I, I think that's a, a brave reminder because I think sometimes we get so, so hung up on other people's expectations for our lives and what we should do and who we should be. And next thing you know, you wake up and all the things you should have done are just now regrets. Yes. So, so that that is fantastic advice. Thank you for that. Like, really good reminder and thank you for for being so so bold and so brave and, and doing your shoulds <laughs> oh yeah the shoulds not i think there's a book actually about the should and the must i can't remember what it's called but um what you what you should do so i think it was a woman who woke up one day and wanted a pain that's what she wanted doing i i, I don't remember because oh. my too many things on my mind, but Look, we'll find it. We'll post it later. People will get a chance to take a peek at that too. Uh, we've talked a little bit about your journey. We've shared an expert excerpt from among the branded. We've told people where they can go get it. Uh, Antonio has made me jealous about his signed copy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like seriously jealous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I want, we've given a little bit of advice of things that people can read to improve their writing. We've talked about Strunk and White, which is like literally like writing 101. Like if you don't have this book on your shelf as a writer, are you a writer? <laughs> I want to shade you like that truly. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> definitely pick it up. Classic. That, that's my point. <laughs> um, <laughs> Is there anything you haven't shared yet that, that we want to talk about? Um, is there anything I want to share? Um, not really. Uh, that last thing I said about doing what you really want is super important. And um, just don't worry about any, don't think, don't overthink it because I used to be one of those overthinkers where you overthink the joy out of everything, right? Yes. So, so just, just, you know, that famous slogan, just do it and then think about it afterwards. <laughs> That's how I got here. <laughs> right. I literally woke up one day and I was like, oh, I could just do a LinkedIn live show and I kept being like, oh, I should do this. And I just I decided I'm not going to wait for, for all the extra pieces to be together. I don't need a logo. I don't need a website. Let's just do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And if you don't like it, you can, you don't have to do it. You can, you can switch things or you can switch it up. You can do it at a different time, but new works for me. I'm here anyway. Yeah. And now I just enjoy like the interaction. I will be honest though. Like a lot of times, usually from like 8 a.m. to like noon, I'm usually out roaming in at the thrift store. <laughs> so this oh, are this you is thrifter? Like, are you, oh you, my god, yes. <laughs> okay, that's another thing we have in common. Yes, I love yes. thrift stores. I oh my god, like I'm in. There's like a Facebook group I'm in, and like some of the stuff these women find is amazing. I'm like, I'm jealous. Where do you live? Like <laughs> oh, Richmond, Virginia. Just shout out to Richmond, Virginia has the best thrift stores. I'm telling you, they have great stuff. I buy stuff. Anyway, I know it's not part of the conversation, but. <laughs> It's important. It's important. No, I think it's important because it also like gives room for people to like feel comfortable and like reach out to you and say, "Hey, Linda, I'm a thrifter too, and look what I found." Or, yeah. I like to, to bring the whole person to the conversation. This isn't just about your book or just about you being a writer at SNPS. This this is the Linda Linda show. Like I'm here for you today. Like, <laughs> that's funny. I like that. That's great. Oh, look, see, people agree. Thrift stores are like stories into themselves. Oh, man, I got to go there. And oh, get my next <laughs> that brilliant. idea, the, the light bulb, bulb goes off. Jot it down. <laughs> like, right, I'm doing it right away, yes. Yeah, do, yeah, seriously, I'm like, don't let it go because I know how it gets. And then Shipper said, I guess until you just go ahead and do it, you would never know what happened. If it worked out or not. Now that's the truth. You don't know until you take that that flying leap. And I, I have to remind myself sometimes to like, look, your yeah. net is big enough to catch you. Jump. And and that goes for like some things that some of us don't like, which is so social media. But unless we put ourselves, if you're 
you know, wanting to make connections or you're an artist or whatever, you, you kind of sort of have to be on social media and you kind of just had to put yourself out there because s someone said, it wasn't me, but I'll say in here, you could write the best book or you could have the best uh, painting that you want to sell. But if nobody knows about it, no one's going to buy it. So you have to put yourself out there and it's hard. Yeah. It's hard yes. to put yourself out there. Well, I'm super grateful you put yourself out here today. I'm proud of the work that you're doing. Thank I'm looking forward to your third novel. So when it comes out, maybe we'll have to bring you back and, and oh. let you know that that is here too. And we can talk about it. I but, would love that. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so I don't think I have any more questions. And one of the things I know some of the viewers are watching on Facebook, guys, for whatever reason, I'm having issues with getting Facebook comments to appear. I'm not ignoring you guys. So I'm going to keep chugging away and trying to figure out the solution. Um, and again, I want to thank everybody so much for being a part of this week's episode of Career Conversations. Linda Smolkin, you guys, she is the author of Among the Branded. I need you to go get your copies. And I need you to share another copy with a friend. So, you know, go ahead and get two. <laughs> it is IndieBound.org. You search for Linda Smolkin. That's S-M-O-L-K-I-N. I say that because I goofed it up and called her Smokelin instead of Smolkin. Okay. So now you got to know. Don't make my mistake. <laughs> um, and, and, and grab the book. Linda, if you'll hold on just a second for me, I'm going to close yeah. out the show and the broadcast. Um, but before I wrap up completely, guys, I want to let you know that next week's episode on the 24th at noon is going to include a fitness enthusiast and coach. Her name is Onyx. So you guys tune in, in excuse me, tune in. <laughs> All right. Tune in again next week at noon. Onyx is going to be right here on LinkedIn sharing her journey to becoming a fitness coach. And, and she's also got an apparel brand. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching Career Conversations. I'm your host, Unique Walcott. You guys have a fantastic weekend.